All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of our Aquarium's Online Academy. My name is Talia. I'm from the Education Department, and I'm excited to share a little bit of my morning with you. So today, uh, we're going to be exploring some fishy friends today. We're going to try to figure out a little bit about what makes a fish a fish. What are some of those special things that kind of make them what they are. We're going to be exploring a lot of different types of fish today as well. So I hope you're excited to join us on our fishy exploration today. Um, now, if you have any questions uh, during our chat today, you are welcome to ask those questions. And you can interact with us two different ways, depending on when you are watching this program. So if you're watching this live Monday morning at 9 o'clock, you can text in those questions to the number down below on your screen. That number is 562 Two eight six one eight three eight. If you're watching this a little bit later after we've aired, um, you're still welcome to ask questions. We just ask that you email us instead. So that email address is live at lbaop.org. So those are two ways to interact with us, depending on when you are watching this program. So my friend, let's get started uh, by kind of waking up our scientist brains this morning, and let's try to figure out a little bit about what makes a fish a fish? When I'm looking at a fish, how do I know it's a fish and not something else? So I'm going to step off screen for a moment so we can observe a little bit more of our exhibit here. This is Blue Cavern. This is a kelp forest exhibit we have here in our aquarium. Um, so I'm going to get out of the way so you can hopefully see a little bit more fish and not just me. Um, and let's take a moment to, ooh, there's one coming towards me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that was good timing. Um, let's try to figure out a little bit about what makes a fish a fish. I'm going to give you at home um, just a few moments to see what do you notice? What stands out to you? Ooh, feisty Garibaldi today. <laughs> those are those orange fish. Try to figure out a little bit more about what makes a fish a fish. Hmm. I'm noticing a couple of things. I wonder what you notice. I'm noticing how they move for sure. Maybe some other things too that make a fish a fish. And then you're welcome to text those observations into that number on your screen 562 286 1838. Give you just a moment more to finish making those observations. Here comes my fish friend again. <laughs> there are definitely a few that know where the camera is, so I think they definitely come and say hi. Ah! <laughs> Every once in a while. Oh my goodness. All right. Now I have a fish right there. <laughs> but um, what are some things that you noticed? What are some things that make a fish a fish? So I think what stood out to me first is a little bit about how they move and what they're using to move. So definitely one of the, hello, definitely one of the things uh, that make a fish a fish um, are those fins on their body. And they're definitely using those fins um, to help them swim. So some fish use different parts of their body to swim. Some fish are using mostly their tail to swim to kind of swish them back and forth. Some fish swim a little bit more with their fins on the side with their pectoral fins here as well. So sometimes you'll see fish moving a little bit more like this. Some fish are going to move their tail a little bit more for definitely their fins are something that helps them out. And those fins, those special things that are in them or on them to help them out in their home, that is something that we like to call adaptation. So that's definitely something we're going to explore a little bit today is what are some of the special things that make fish a fish. So fins are definitely one of the things that make fish a fish. There's a few more that I can think of. Um, ooh, and this is a great picture of one of our Garibaldi here. This is um, a, actually this is the state marine fish of California. Um, I also like that their tail is shaped like a heart. Um, so one of the things, looking a little bit closer at 
this fish. I can definitely see their fins. Uh, they got some pointy fins on the top. They got their heart-shaped tail. They got their pectoral fins on the side to swim. I'm trying to think. I think Garibaldi swim a little... I'm trying to remember if they swim more with their pectoral fins versus their tail. But, oh, that's a great idea. Miss Sarah, Miss Sarah's helping me out, by the way. She's changing all the media behind me. Ah, thanks, Garibaldi. Um, so, yeah, they swim a little bit more with their tail, it looks like. And they're kind of steering with their uh, their fins on the side there. Ooh, but did you see that fish? That fish is kind of flapping its fins a little bit, almost like a bird, to help it swim. So, yeah, different fish are going to be using their fins in different ways to help them swim. So, typically, one is doing the, the, the work. One is kind of giving them their momentum forward. And others, uh, the other is going to do a little bit more of steering. But let's hop back to that big picture of the Garibaldi. Let's look a little bit closer at them to try to figure out some other things that make a fish a fish. Hmm. Now I definitely noticed some texture on the side of my fish here. I noticed there's kind of these nice little kind of half circle shapes here. Uh, and those are their scales. So just like we have skin, um, on our body, or some animals might have hair or fur on their body, fish have scales, and that's another thing that helps make a fish a fish. And those scales are going to act kind of um, to protect them, kind of like having a little tiny little like suit of armor to help protect their uh, their body underneath. So the fish have scales, that's another thing that makes a fish a fish. Now looking closer at this fish, I also notice that there's kind of this big line here. It kind of starts there, and then it kind of curves up there. And those are the fish's gills. So just like we have lungs to breathe air um, in, or breathe oxygen, I should say, in the air, fish have gills to help them breathe oxygen in the water. So they're going to open up their gills, the water is going to pass over them, and then they're going to be able to extract that oxygen out so they can breathe under water. So those are definitely some things that make a fish a fish, those adaptations to help them out. So they have their fins to help them move, to help them swim, and then different fish are going to be using different fins to move in different ways. They have their scales to help protect their skin, and they have their gills to help them breathe. So those are definitely some things. If I was going to try to figure out, am I looking at a fish? Or am I looking at something else? Those are definitely some things that I would be trying to keep an eye out for uh, as I'm observing this animal. So let's dive in, my friends, next. And let's try to explore a couple different fish that live in the ocean. Because definitely not all fish are the same size or shape or color. Um, they definitely all have different stories. So let's try to explore um, some fish. I'm going to let my friend Miss Sarah choose... A fish. Ah! Okay, so this fish, my friends, um, is a giant sea bass. This is a fish that lives uh, locally. This is a fish that likes to live in the kelp forest. And it is doing a really good job at camouflaging. So it has kind of a gray... I know he looks. they look very blue in this picture. Uh, but they have uh, kind of a gray speckly pattern to them. They have these kind of black dots on their body. And that helps them blend in a little bit to their home. Not necessarily by precisely matching the background per se, but it kind of helps break up their body pattern. Um, so it's a little bit easier uh, for them to kind of maybe match some of the rocks and things that are in their home. Now, this is a really, really big fish. I know it's hard to see or hard to tell by looking at the pictures there. Um, but this fish gets like over five feet long. They get like bigger than me when they grow up and like hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So this can be a huge fish um, that likes to live in the kelp forest and definitely do a great job at hiding in their habitat. Now, jumping back to that, that other picture of the, the sea bass we saw, how many sea bass are in the picture? Hmm. I definitely, uh, my eye is drawn to this big friend over here. 
But did you notice there's another one? Down here, there's a tail hiding in the corner. It took me a long time to find that second fish. I think all of us were like, wait, there's how many fish in this picture? No, there's just one. But yeah, definitely does a great job at sort of breaking up that outline, make it a little bit harder to tell where the fish starts and where the fish stops. So yeah, a giant sea bass is a great fish uh, that lives in our kelp forest. Miss Sarah, do we have a picture of a baby giant sea bass? I'm going to give her a moment to pull up a picture. And a what? Ooh, okay. It's so cute. So this is what a baby giant sea bass looks like. It looks a little different. It's still kind of spotty. But uh, it looks a lot different than it looks like when it's a grown-up. And sometimes I think animals, they like to camouflage kind of a different, different parts of their habitat and different stages of their life. So this might be a little bit more of a brown color to help them blend in with the seaweed that they might be trying to hide in when they're little itty bitty friends, just like this. Um, and again, they're gonna get really, really big when they grow up. But yeah, this is what a baby giant sea bass looks like. And we're actually part of uh, their kind of, uh, excuse me, their conservation story here at the uh, aquarium. We're one of the first aquariums too help raise baby giant sea bass and then release them back to the ocean. Um, because a lot of people saw this big fish and thought, oh, ooh, that might be a good fish uh, to catch. We caught too many of them. Their numbers went down. And now, thankfully, with some restoration um, projects, we can hopefully help add to that population count in the future uh, and get more baby, uh, get more giant sea bass out there in the ocean. So we're kind of part of that story here at the aquarium. So this is what a baby looks like. And then Miss Sarah said she had a picture of our juvenile. This is them when they're grownups. So in between that um, is gonna be what our our juvenile giant sea bass looks like uh, here at the aquarium. Um, their name is Utaka. And I wanna say they're almost like, oh, they're pretty cute. They look a little bit more like what they look like when they're grown, kind of in between that kind of brown kelpie color uh to getting that sort of gray and black of their adulthood um and this is kind of what they look like when they're sort of a teenager and i want to say ours is about i haven't looked at them in a while they're like about football a little maybe a little bit bigger than a football at this point but yeah that is a giant sea bass that lives in the kelp forest very cool um, so let's maybe switch gears for our next fish. Let's look at maybe a, a more colorful fish. So I'll have Miss Sarah put up. Ooh, interesting. So this fish, I notice, has a beautiful smile. Um, and it's a pretty interesting teeth here. Hmm, it almost looks like it has human teeth like we do. So this is a parrotfish, and that parrotfish is a very colorful fish that lives in the coral reef. So pretty colorful home. Makes sense that you probably have a pretty colorful fish hanging out there as well. So it gets the same parrotfish from a couple of things. Um, one, it is very colorful like a parrot is, but two, it has this really awesome mouth. It kind of has a beak like a parrot does. So a parrotfish likes to live in the coral reef, really good at hiding in there, but it also likes to eat coral. <gasps> oh my goodness. They're kind of act almost a little bit like the gardeners uh, of a coral reef. They're kind of helping uh, make sure that there's space for new corals to grow. And now when they're munching on coral, coral, when we think about coral, we kind of think about this hard thing in the ocean. It kind of almost uh, maybe reminds us of like a rock or a building. That's kind of the skeleton that's around coral itself. Uh, so that's what they want to get to. They want to break into that kind of hard skeleton and eat some of the squishy little coral polyps. They almost look like teeny tiny little sea anemones. That's what they want to eat uh, when they're trying to munch on coral. Um, now as they're munching on those coral polyps, they are going to be ingesting a little bit of that skeleton with them. It's going to get processed in their body, come out the other side, um, and it kind of comes out as basically sand, uh, which is kind of weird, but kind of awesome. Um, so they will essentially poop out very finely ground up coral and that some of that makes its way to some of those white 
tropical sandy beaches uh, that we have in some of our warmer areas of the Pacific. So you can thank a parrotfish uh, for giving us some of the sand uh, on our white tropical sandy beaches. Again, those are the beaches that are mostly made up of ground up coral, not so much our beaches here in California. Uh, so parrotfish is another really fun fish that lives in the ocean. This is another picture. Ooh, I like this picture. Uh, another picture of one of our parrotfish. This is, I believe, a bicolored parrotfish. Super duper colorful. Again, kind of get all that sort of rainbow effect to help them match a little bit of their home. And then you can see that sort of white sand underneath them as well. Very neat. And here's some of them swimming. So some of these are parrot fish. Some of these are some other tropical fish. But again, really good at matching their home. And I believe this is one of our webcams. So yeah, if you are ever curious about what are our fish up to, you can check out some of our webcams on our website. There it is. <laughs> or there's his tail. <laughs> And again, if you have any questions, my friends, if you have any, any, uh, if you're wondering about some fishy facts, if you are curious about some ocean questions, you're welcome to text in those questions. That number is again down below on your screen, 562-286-1838. If you're watching this live on Monday morning, if you're watching this later, again, please feel free to ask questions. You can text, the, or excuse me, you can email those instead if you're watching this after uh, 9.30 on Monday morning live at lbaop.org. Now, speaking of tropical fish, I kind of wanted to switch, still, still keep on the tropical notes, uh, but I wanted to maybe put up a picture of a fish that maybe we don't think about it so much as a fish. It has a kind of an unusual body shape. It has a very long mouth. Ooh. Hmm. So, Miss Sarah put up a picture of a seahorse. Hmm. Are seahorses fish? Let's think about that for a minute, because remember, we, in the beginning, we kind of figured out some of those things that make a fish a fish. So let's, let's ponder. <laughs> let's ponder. See if we can match some of those things that make a fish a fish. So fish have scales. I think I would agree with that with our seahorse. Their scales look a little bit different than the scales we were looking at before. I think a lot of times when you think about the shape of a scale, we kind of think about this sort of loopy kind of half circle shape. These are a little bit more like bony plates, but I would say, yeah, I could, I could see, I could call those scales. I'm going to get good at my backwards pointing today um, on the seahorse's body there. Um, they also have fins. Now I know that our seahorse tail doesn't look like the fishy ones we were looking at earlier, but they do have a fin here. Boop, boop. Help them to swim. And then they also have fins. I'm trying to see if I can see it in the photo here. They kind of have fins by their cheeks as well. And that kind of helps them. Excuse me, my mic is falling off my ear. Um, that kind of helps them swim around as well. So they do have some fins, even though their body shape doesn't look like that sort of kind of football shape that we think about when we think about fish. All right, so scales, check. Fins, check. Gills. Gills are also going to be a little bit kind of where we think their cheeks are kind of right, right about there, I think. Should be about where their gills are. And they kind of open them just like we think about when we think about a lot of other fish. Ooh, it's so cute. Have a little baby seahorse. I think it's thinking it's a possum or a monkey, but that's okay. <laughs> but it's a great picture uh, of what their tail does. Uh, their tail does curl like a monkey. It has a prehensile tail, which is awesome for helping to steady them, and especially to grab onto things like this blade of seagrass. Um, and that helps them stay a little bit stiller if um, they are more still if they are 
in a place where maybe there's some waves coming through and they don't want to get knocked over. I know that's not fun getting knocked over by a wave at the beach. Probably not fun for a little seahorse as well. Uh, but they can use that tail to help grab on the seagrass and help them keep a little bit more steady if there's maybe a wave coming through the area where they are. So yeah, seahorses are a fish, even though they don't really look so much uh, like a fish. Their their body shape's a little bit different. Um, ooh, and also speaking of, since we're talking about mouths with the parrotfish earlier, their mouth is a little bit different too. Very, very long kind of, um, I guess, snout, you would say. And then their mouth kind of opens and closes, just like a little flap. And that's great for kind of acting like a straw and sucking up little plankton. So kind of flit around um, for the plankton and then suck it up with their kind of straw-like mouth there. So yeah, seahorse, even though at first glance we're like, is that a fish? It still has some of those characteristics uh, that make a fish a fish. So yeah, seahorses are a really neat fish that live in the ocean. Again, please feel free to text in some questions um, if you have any questions. Um, all right, I think we should do a little bit more exploring with some fish. Uh, maybe one, one or two more fish. I'm gonna have Miss Sarah surprise me. And let's, ooh, okay, okay. Um, so clownfish or anemone fish are another fish that live in the ocean. And again, kind of bright, bright colors. Um, so maybe not completely live in a, in a pretty colorful place, so it might, might be matching their background a little bit, but also those stripes are going to, again, help break up that pattern, so it's a little harder to tell where does the fish start, where the fish stop. Also, those stripes might be blending in a little bit with their home, so anemone fish or clownfish live in an anemone. Um, this is a, an invertebrate that kind of looks a little bit like uh, a flower. They'll live in those kind of wiggling tentacles, uh, of the anemone, and they have some special adaptations uh, to help them out as well. So if you know things about anemones, you might you might recall that they feel sticky uh, to us as humans, uh, but they actually have little stinging cells uh, in those tentacles to help the anemone catch their food. These are some baby clownfish, which are adorable, um, help them catch their food. Now you might think, well, hold on. Uh, if they have these kind of stinging cells to help them catch their food, anemones are related to sea jellies, if you want to um, kind of think of another animal that stings. How do the clownfish get to like wiggle in and like literally hang out and live in all the tentacles? How can they do that and not get stung themselves? So clownfish have adapted to have a special mucus coating on their body. They have a special coating on their body which allows them to live in the anemone uh, and not get stung. So the clownfish gets a gets a home, and then the anemone uh, gets to uh, the 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 uh, clownfish kind of helps to keep away some predators. Maybe it also helps probably eat some of the leftovers uh, that the anemone might leave behind. So it's kind of a win-win situation, and they kind of help each other out. Very cool. And you can see the, that kind of stripe pattern working a little bit more in their favor here in this picture to help them sort of blend into those tentacles uh, of the anemone. Very nice. All right, I hear we have some questions uh, coming in. Miss Sarah's going to get those uh, ready for just a moment here, but we can definitely watch those baby clownfish. Uh, in action. And clownfish, I believe, also, um, they lay eggs in sort of a kind of nest uh, as well. So um, they kind of look like, like little circles. I don't think there's any in this uh, particular picture. But yeah, clownfish, very cool tropical friend that lives um, in the coral reefs. You can also, again, kind of watch those fins that they have. Um, which ones are they moving to steer versus which ones they're moving to kind of move forward? Looks like our clownfish are mostly using uh, those fins uh, on the side to help them 
move um, in the water there, and it looks like they're mostly using their tail, kind of swishing that back and forth uh, to help them steer. So again, it's kind of interesting, um, even though fish are, um, fins are something that make fish a fish, they're, um, depending on what type of fish you're looking at, they might be using their fins in a little bit of a different way, uh, depending on the type of fish you're looking at. I also love that sometimes fish, uh, that stripe that's by their eye, sometimes it goes right through their eye as well, helps them run. Ooh, all right. So it looks like we have some questions coming in from Monta Vista and West Covina. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, Isabella was wondering which fish is the strongest. Ooh. That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure which fish is the strongest. That's and and when we're talking about strongest, I'm wondering: does that mean like, is it the strongest bite? Is it the fastest swimmer? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I'm gonna have to ponder on that. I would say if maybe maybe the fastest fish, maybe the one with the strongest muscles. I know sometimes when we think about being strong, we're like, oh, we have a big muscly fish. Maybe I would think about like a tuna or a marlin or a swordfish. Those might be maybe the strongest fish we're thinking about, like muscles. That's a great question. I'm going to have, that's going to be my homework, Isabella. I'm going to go look that up and try to figure out what I mean by when we <laughs> say which fish is the strongest. All right, let's see. Uh, Jaslyn was wondering, ooh, what are those plants? Ooh, that's a great question. If we're talking about what we're, ooh, bleh, these ones, um, those are kelp. Uh, kelp is um, kind of like a plant. It's a little bit simpler. Um, and these are some types of kelp or seaweed uh, that would be around our ocean. So I think we have a couple different different types kind of represented here in our exhibit uh the biggest one like that one bat, right there that is called giant kelp so yeah those are some of the plants that uh, you may have seen during our um chat this morning i've got some more questions Ooh, here's it in the uh ocean we've got the sunlight coming down and they're gonna sway back and forth kelp is really tall it goes from the the kind of ground floor i guess you could say where you are off the coast all the way up to the surface and then flops over keeps going this way all right julian was wondering what do fish eat Ooh, great question depends on the fish so and depends on kind of what their mouth look like or their teeth look like right so if you have a really long mouth like this butterfly fish or like the seahorse we saw earlier you might want to be like picking at little things right you might have to like pinch at little things or suck it up like a straw like our seahorse so you might be going after some algae that's maybe growing on the rocks kind of think like maybe moss would be a good kind of analogy or comparison for that um, you might be eating little algae you might be sucking up little shrimps little planktons um, you might have a fish like the giant sea bass where they actually have a really big mouth they open it up really big and kind of suck in what's in front of them so they might be going after some smaller fish um some animals um like to eat uh little things in the sand they might be eating uh worms crabs snails uh maybe some fish even have a strong enough beak to eat Ooh, that's perfect that's actually who i wanted to talk about this friend that one right there um there's a sheephead it's another type of fish they have a really strong jaw they can actually crack open uh sea urchins um so they could eat really, really strong things like that. Thank you, Miss Sarah, for putting up a picture of a seahorse as my brain is struggling <laughs> to <laughs> finish its sentence. Yeah, so I wouldn't want to put that in my mouth. I'm like, ah, that hurts. But they have a strong enough jaw to help them out. Um, so yeah, sheephead can eat sea urchins. So yeah, it really depends on the fish, what their mouth looks like. Um, where their mouth is too, if it's like in front of their face versus down below, um, they can eat a lot of different things depending on what type of fish you're looking at. Um, ooh, Nikki was wondering, why are there different colors? That's a great question. So sometimes they have different colors to help them, um, ooh, like this beautiful palette tank, or you might know it as Dory. Um, 
they might have some colors to help them camouflage, to help them kind of blend into their home. So you might have noticed as we were exploring the fish today, that the fish were in different homes, different habitats. And the fish that lived in the kelp forest, they had a lot of different colors versus uh, they were a little bit more muted, a little bit more gray, brown, white, maybe kind of that kelpy green uh, versus our tropical fish that live in a much more color, whoa, much more colorful home. So they're going to have much more of a kind of rainbow palette in terms of the colors that they have. Um, very cool. Um, so yeah, those are some of the different reasons why you might have some different colors. And in terms of of uh, maybe you're thinking about why they have different colors, just like we have different hair colors and eye colors, they have different pigments in their skin and that helps the fish show different colors. So that's more about what your question was. Oh my goodness, my friends, I think we are just about, we are just about out of time to talk about fish, but I want to thank you very, 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 very much for joining us this morning. I hope you had fun exploring some of our fishy friends, learning a little bit more about what makes a fish fish and all a, a couple of different types of fish that call the ocean their home. So thank you for exploring with me. A um, couple of quick things before we say goodbye. My teacher friends that are watching, if you wouldn't mind in texting in how many students are watching with you, what your class numbers are, that helps us kind of keep a little bit better track about our viewership uh, for these programs. So if you wouldn't mind texting that to that number down below on your screen, 562-286-1838, we would appreciate that just to get a little bit more information about uh, how many views we get on these programs. Uh, but again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you have any further questions, you're welcome to email those questions in. That is also down below, live at lbaop.org. If you have more questions, we're happy to answer them. We just ask that you email us as we're going off the air. So thank you again for joining us. Um, we'll see you next time, I believe, on Wednesday uh, for some more Aquarium Online Academy. Have a great rest of your morning, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.